time now for our in-depth interview of the morning and today we're going to be talking about the plight of the Rohingya, often called the world's longest persecuted minority. Hundreds of thousands of Rohingya Muslims were forced out of their homes in Myanmar last August during a wave of violent attacks that the United Nations has called textbook ethnic cleansing. We are joined now on set by Mang Zani. He's a human rights campaigner and the author uh, of the slow-burning genocide of Myanmar's Rohingya. Thanks very much for coming on to talk to us today on France 24. Uh, you join us here on the channel just a week after Amnesty International published a report on Myanmar uh, documenting killings, they say, by Rohingya uh, militants uh, against uh, Hindus. Now, you've been very critical of that Amnesty International report. You've said that they've poured fuel on anti-Muslim fear and loathing in Burma, and you've said it's not a stretch to say that Amnesty have blood on their hands. Why are you so angry uh, about this report? Do you not believe the allegations that Amnesty is making against these Rohingya militants? No, let me just be very clear. Uh, I don't deny or dismiss the fact that, or the possibility that Asa, the Rohingya militant group, uh, might have um, committed, you know, uh, atrocities. But I think that the problem here is the, the report was conducted shortly. If the report were to be uh, subject to any judicial review, in other words, uh, submitted to a court of law, the defence would have a field day uh, you know, poking holes in amnesties, uh, you know, quote unquote, hard evidence and triangulation, all this stuff. But the whether or not the report is correct is actually less of a concern for me, because in the face of what the French president, Emmanuel Macron himself called, not simply ethnic cleansing, because ethnic cleansing has no legality in international law. Macron President Macron called it a genocide, and many of us who have studied this for years know this to be a genocide. So in the face of a genocide, Amnesty came out with this report, and, and following the report, the Burmese media outlet, both private and government, are having an extremely productive field day promoting anti-Muslim, anti-Rohingya sentiment. They've devoted, you know, programs to play this up. And this is the government that blocked the United Nations fact-finding mission. And this is a government that allowed and facilitated Amnesty to come in and do the report. Without the government's facilitation, indirect or direct, Amnesty would not have been able to um, conduct this investigation. Let's be clear, though, that Amnesty have been documenting for a long time the, the uh, extensive attacks on the right. Rohingya. Surely they have a right to document sure. both sides of uh, what's been happening in Myanmar. Oh, of course, of course, you know. But in... do they really have blood on their hands? Is that, is that really fair? Yeah, um, yes, it is. You know why? Because, you know, like the argument that Amnesty International, founded in 1961, uh, is a Nobel Peace Prize winning human rights organisation, does not guarantee that Amnesty would not make a mistake, yeah? I'm, I'm not just, you know, uh, 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 I'm not criticizing Amnesty as a whole. You know, it is a very honorable organization. I was a card-carrying member for years. I participated in letter-writing campaign, and I was very proud as a student to, to be an Amnesty activist. But what I'm saying is that uh, in a situation where, like, uh, your rapport, you know, that may or may not be, um, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, absolutely tight has only poured more fuel because we're not looking at essentially Rohingya in Burma. We, we also need to be concerned about Rohingya, 60,000 Rohingyas in India and, and hundreds of millions of Muslims in India because the way Amnesty put it, it sensationalized the issue. Say, like, Rohingya militant killed Hindu. But those yeah. facts aren't in dispute, are they? Like, we, we, Amnesty has spent a long time documenting right. the fact that what happened in August was some 99 Hindus killed uh, by a Rohingya militants. Yeah. That's not incorrect. The headline's not wrong, is it? No, the, uh, the, the, the headline, I would say, is wrong. Amnesty how, is that, how is that incorrect? The, um, the, 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 argue, the evidence, yeah, in, in quotes, that the Amnesty presented, you know, is based on very flimsy... Uh, you know, uh, evidence, essentially, Amnesty, if you speak a Rohingya language, if you're wearing a mask, and if you kill someone with primitive tools, you are 
Asa or the Rohingya militant. Well, all those three things can be done by any group. It doesn't have to be like uh, this particular group. And, and the Burmese military has known to use this, um, you know, uh, essentially official narrative that on the 25th of August, 2017, Asa or the militant angry uh, Rohingya young men, largely illiterate, coordinated attacks on 30 different heavily armed security outposts. That has not been independently verified. Well, Amnesty is an independent organization. It isn't, yeah, and th this is the issue. Amnesty is well known for its like your know, gold standards, uh, you know, research. But why is Amnesty not applying the same methodology, yeah? Uh, that when it uh, adopted the Burmese military's narrative, uh, that uh, Arsa or Rohingya attacked the security outpost. Therefore, the military was uh, launching the military operations in defense of the state. That why did Amnesty simply repeated the Burmese official narrative while the entire United Nations apparatus and officials and diplomats reject that? See, that is that is why I find Amnesty report fishy. What you appear to be suggesting is that uh, Amnesty International shouldn't report uh, attacks that they see that are happening, uh, being carried out by Rohingyas in order to uh, try and prevent attacks, reprisal attacks on Rohingya Muslims in other parts of the region. Is that fair? You're saying they yes. shouldn't, they, they shouldn't no. report... Even if it's true, they shouldn't report these attacks? No, no, no. no. Amnesty, Amnesty's job is to report uh, any human rights violations uh, committed by either state or non-state actors, such as the Rohingya militant groups. I fully support the amnesty's right and professionalism to attempt to report it. But what I'm saying is that this, the report is shortly conducted, despite the fact that amnesty has, um, you know, good reputation, simply because you are a world-renowned surgery or surgeon does not mean that you will not commit a, a, a you know a, a medical malpractice okay. or failing. So the, the the thing is like in India, just in the last few days, the Rohingya camp has been burned down. Yeah, and it has happened twice already uh, in in a span of a few years. So I I say Amnesty has blood on its hand because Amnesty is putting the lives of essentially hundreds of thousands of Rohingyas seeking shelter in different countries and also inflaming okay. the anti-Muslim sentiment in India and beyond. I think you've made that uh, pretty clear. Let me ask you, you mentioned Emmanuel Macron earlier. Yeah. You are in Paris uh, for a meeting at the National Assembly a little later on this week. Uh, the Rohingya issue kind of fallen out of the international uh, spotlight. What are you hoping to do here in Paris to try and remind people about the plight of the Rohingya? Well, I think, like, obviously the Rohingya issues uh, is no longer in the headlines because, like, you know, dramatic scenes have stopped. Uh, the scenes of uh, biblical exodus, you know, like 700,000 in a span of a few months, yeah? The largest refugee uh, uh, exodus in, in the last uh, nine months. And uh, what I'm here... What, uh, I'm one of the organisers uh, as uh, part of the Free Rohingya Coalition, working with the uh, deputy uh, Daniela Obono, um, from the, um, the assembly, we are bringing together a group of like renowned scholars, researchers, uh, as well as like you know reputable, uh, iconic figures such as uh, uh, Iranian Nobel Prize um, uh, winner and human rights campaigner, uh, Dr. Shirin Ibadi. Bangladesh government is sending uh, its um, speaker of the national parliament, uh, Shirin Chowdhury, a legal expert, and also like you know the, uh, the Canadian Prime Minister. Uh, uh, Trudeau's uh, special envoy, Bob Ray, is participating. And so that's happening at uh, 8.30 in the morning, the whole day tomorrow. And uh, the, the Rohingyas themselves are coming to, uh, to tell the world that uh, they, what they experience. You know, forget, like, you know, what experts and politicians and policymakers uh, say, ethnic cleansing, genocide, crimes against humanity. What matters is what Rohingya themselves, women, men who survived uh, atrocity, say, you know what, the Burmese military has been on a project to exterminate us 
uh, you know, since the, uh, the late 1970s. That is a message we want to give to the French public and policy makers. OK, that's very clear. Thank you very much. We're going to have to leave it there. Mang Zani, a human rights campaigner for the Rohingya uh, Muslims, thank you very much indeed for your time here on France 24 this morning.